Okay, so student versus professional. Eric Samu's version of Libertango called Libertango. <laughs> and on a normal day, I would be really enjoying these performances if I was watching them in live performance. But because today we are comparing them and going down to the molecular level, I'm going to be extremely picky. It kind of sounds uncertain almost, a bit shaky. Man, why you got to rush? <laughs> slid into the DMs of this piece. Really tense and on edge. Tango music in general doesn't have abrupt slowdowns and abrupt speed ups. Oh, okay, that is one of the hardest comparisons I've ever done on this show. Well, I've only done two, but still. <laughs> Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of The Studio. My name is Adam. And it's time for yet another episode of Let's Watch Student vs. Professional. Thank you so much to my studio VIPs, Robert Utomo, Wolf Lina, Ryan Carlisle, Sang Shun Han, Greg Harris, Dom's Dominic Chung, DMP Newberger, Scott Rader, and Marimba Maurice. Thank you so much for your continued support. And today's featured studio artist is Dane Anderson. Thank you so much for joining the studio artist team. And if you'd like to become a studio VIP or a studio artist, you can go to patreon.com forward slash amtan or you can click over here. Welcome back to the show once again. I hope you've been well. I hope you've been staying safe once again during this difficult time. It's been very interesting for me staying mostly by myself in the studio or at home, but I guess I'm getting a lot of things done. Thank you for checking out my new duo Little Things, which is a four and a third octave marimba duo. You can check it out over here if you haven't already. It's available for just $5 on my online store at percussioncom forward slash download. And this week I'm also releasing a brand new solo for four and a third octave marimba, which I've been talking about for a while now. I'm really excited to get it out. So if you haven't already, please hit that red subscribe button below to keep up with my uploads and hit that notification bell to know exactly when I upload that new piece. Okay, so student versus professional. This is a segment that I started a couple of weeks back and you guys seem to like it, so it's back again. It's where we watch a student and a professional perform the same piece and we look for the very little differences that make a performance go from good to amazing. Now, of course, if you have anything to submit to this segment, you can submit it at adamcampercussion.com forward slash submit. And one such submission came from Nick Kopok, who said, Hey Adam, big fan. You've helped my playing develop a lot. A common piece that I see a lot of people learn and perform for marimba is Libertango. The piece was composed by an Argentine composer known as Astor Piazzolla. What do you think about the arrangement for marimba? Do you think it got the melodic idea across and enhanced the composition? P.S. You might appreciate the performer's technical ability Wow! Okay, so Piazzolla and especially Libertango, I'm quite familiar with those. I have learned this Samu arrangement before, but I've also played a duo arrangement of Libertango in Japan two years ago, and I also played Murano Porteño with Therese three years ago. So all of that is on my channel. And Piazzolla really brought tango to the masses. Like, a lot of percussionists now play Piazzolla music. A lot of classical musicians play Piazzolla music. So I think it's really good to have all these different influences in our repertoire. Now the arrangement he's referring to is Eric Samu's version of Libertango called Libertango. <laughs> if you're familiar with Eric Samu, you'll know his pieces like Rotation 1, 2, 3, 4, Indifference, and also his variations like this one and also variations on Porgy and Bess. Now do I think this arrangement is an accurate reflection of Libertango by Piazzolla? Mm, it's not so much an arrangement of Piazzolla as it is a reinterpretation. There's a lot of other people's arrangements like Fumito Ninoya's arrangement, Kana Amori's arrangement, which sound a bit more like the style of tango. As a homage to Liber Tango, it's all right. Anyway, we're not here to discuss the merits of the piece. We're here to talk about the performance. So without further ado, our student performer for today is Nikhail Macmillan, and he's from Queensland, Australia. Yes. Anyway, he uploaded a video of him playing the Botango for a marimba competition in 2017. So this video could have been re-edited, it could have been retaken many times. It's not a live performance. And that's why we're going to compare it to another video, which is also not a live performance. Now, the video that Nick is talking about and the video that we're going to use as our professional video is from Sam Arm, who is a very established very virtuosic marimba soloist from America. Sam is part of the Percussion Collective. I actually watched him play at PASIC 2018. He is very, very good and he's performed in all kinds of venues around the world. Now, of course, there is an obvious difference in video quality between these two. Vic first videos are very polished and the sound quality is really nice. And Nikau's video, while it looks pretty good in terms of composition, it is filmed on like a phone. So we will take that into consideration. And on a normal day, I would be really enjoying these performances if I was watching them in live performance. But because today we are comparing them and going down to the molecular level, I'm going to be extremely picky. So keep that in mind when you hear my comments. Okay, if you have a copy of the score with you, now would be a good time to get it out so we can watch it together. So without any further ado, 
let's watch. Okay, so we're gonna start off with the beginning of the piece, which is probably the most normal part of the entire arrangement. It's just the regular theme with some minimal accompaniment. Let's see how Nick Howe does it. Okay, so good stuff from Nikhail, the notes are all correct, the dynamics are pretty good, it's nice and light and bouncy. I am worried about the mallets that he's using, I do think they're going to present some problems in the later sections, but we'll see. The biggest issue I have with Nikhail's interpretation of this section is the fact that he's playing it in a very free manner. He's doing a lot of rubato, which would be okay if the score said to do something free with it, if it said, you know, with freedom, freely, with rubato, but actually it's just tempo equals 100 and it doesn't say anything about playing free. It doesn't have a row or a writ until the very, very end. And also because this is like theme and variation, and this is the main theme. Tango music in general doesn't have abrupt slowdowns and abrupt speed ups. It just sounds very out of character. So I would say maybe it's better to keep this more constant. Let's see how Sam did it. Okay, Sam's version is a lot more like what I'd expect. It's a lot straighter, it still has that same light, bouncy character. He does have slight rubato, very slight adjustments to the speed, but not as much as Nikhail's version, which had very abrupt slowdowns. And he did still present the Poco Rao at the end. I think in this instance, Sam's version is better. Okay, after this section is done, we move to E major and the chaos unfolds. So let's watch Nikhail's version first. Wow, okay, Nikhail's version is pretty good. <laughs> Firstly, the voicing was on point. We could hear the top voice very clearly. Secondly, we had the tempo, we had the exhilaration and the excitement, but it didn't rush. You could put a very steady crotchet beat behind that and it would still be in time. And also the note accuracy is very good. No complaints so far. I do wish the mallets were a little bit softer and had less of that core knocking sound, but it could also be the recording. So it's pretty good. Okay, so Sam also had a really nice tone, he had really nice voicing, he had really accurate dynamics, and no accuracy was pretty good, except in bar 11, his top voice is incorrect. It actually has some extra notes. I think that's more like a memory issue or something like that, but that made the rhythm sound a little bit weird. I also couldn't help but feel that Sam was rushing just a little bit, especially those last triplet runs, the da 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 Overall, they're both doing a pretty good job and this is a pretty presentable way to start the piece. So let's see how they do the next section. Okay, very impressive accuracy from Nikhail. Everything was pretty much 100% correct. And he really paid attention to the voicing. You could hear the layers in the piece. It wasn't just like a barrage of notes. I do feel like the mallets are letting him down once again because every time he hits the bass note, we hear this very sort of like slappy contact sound that is just sort of what happens when you hit the top layer of the bar, but not channeling the sound through the resonator. Some people like that, but I personally think that if the bass note has more warmth and more resonator sound rather than bar sound, which I feel like in Samu's music where he always puts a first beat accent in the bass note, and then after that there's no more bass until the next bar, you kind of need some sustain from the note. So that would probably help a lot. Now, Nikhail didn't really have that much dynamic contrast. From the beginning of the phrase to the end of the phrase, there's supposed to be a gradual crescendo going all the way up to forte and then fortissimo eventually. But that being said, I also think Samu's notation and the engraving of this score kind of leads people to believe that this entire section is just loud, 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 fast, fast, fast. Because every single top voice note is accented and he doesn't really go past 
mezzo forte, forte, and fortissimo for about 75% of this piece. It is interesting. I would like to see more dynamic depth, but I can't really blame him if that makes sense. Let's see how Sam did it. Okay, so firstly, Sam's mallet choice is a lot more sensible. We're getting a lot more of that bass warmth. So it's like Pwah! at the beginning of every bar and we get this nice pedal sustain all the way to the end of the bar before the next one. So it sounds way more coherent, way more cohesive. We're getting that really nice stack of partials. Secondly, I did feel more dynamic contrast. I did hear a very subtle crescendo and it did also step up in dynamic towards the end. That's really nice. And lastly, the tempo and the accuracy are both very good. The tempo is very steady. The accuracy is all there. A lot of things to like about Sam's version. So in this passage, I would say Sam's version is just a little bit better. Okay, this section is difficult because you have to move the third mallet in and out while keeping the fourth mallet constant and keeping your left hand ostinato going. It's a lot of things to think about and getting just a little bit too much of that movement means that maybe your whole hand will move and you hit the wrong interval and it's quite obvious. So in that respect, Nikhil is doing a really admirable job of holding this together. Other than obviously getting these intervals more accurate, the 3-3-2 section, the bit that we have the repeated over and over again towards the end there. Is sounding a little bit panicky so I think that's just because we're not getting to the spaces in time so just getting a little bit more movement and getting more comfortable with that would fix that even despite all these minor hiccups the tempo is still remaining quite steady so it's not bad it's pretty good Okay, so Sam is rushing a lot. He's accelerating pretty much from the start of this passage to where we just stopped there. He's accelerating ever so slightly and then towards the end in that 3-3-2 section, he's condensing those <laughs> So much to the point that it's getting shorter and shorter. Like instead of hearing a 4-4 bar, we're hearing almost like 15-16 bar. It's that much of a difference. So I think the rushing kind of makes it feel very tense. Like I said before, Lima Tango and tangos in general are supposed to be quite straight and quite constant so that the dancers can move and they know where the beat is. Now, if you imagine Lima Tango was like <laughs> it would be quite crazy. Now, I also acknowledge that this piece is not necessarily canon within the Lima Tango universe. Wow, I'm using some really anime terminology there. <laughs> I feel like this very fast accelerating approach isn't really in the character of the piece. Mm. So in this instance, I have to give it to Nikhail because Nikhail's version was more steady. Ooh, I wasn't expecting that at all. Let's keep watching. So I have to say, Nikhil's playing in this section is very good. Even as he transitions from the triplet quavers to the semi-quavers or triplet eighths to the sixteenth notes, he's maintaining the tempo very well and we never feel like we're losing those big 4-4 bits like All of these dampened parts are supposed to be mezzo forte subito and I didn't really get that sort of subito closing down feeling that I would expect. But overall, yes, very very good. Man, the guy was on a roll here.
Okay, so Sam's version is really good. The Sabido drop down in the dampening parts is excellent. We can really hear the contrast a lot more, but Sam, man, why you gotta rush? <laughs> Sam is rushing the dampening section. He's getting really excited about that. He's getting really excited about that rhythm and it's getting shorter and shorter. Yeah, I think that's just a case of trying to keep those big crotchet beats in time, which Nick Hare was doing a really good job at. So this is pretty close. Sam's version has better dynamics though and better feel overall, despite the rushing. So I have to hand it to Sam. So I've said this on many other episodes on this channel, which is whenever you have very little of something, so for example, in this piece, there's a lot of loud, fast sections, and there's very few sections where you get to play soft, you should really make the most of it. And I feel like Nikeo in this instance, although he got all the right notes and he did have the slow down, he didn't really go down to Niente. You get to that nice silence with the pause, and then the listeners sort of absorb everything that they just listen, they just process it, and then you restart the next section. And then it becomes that much more special, and sometimes, Little things like that can be the edge between winning a competition or coming second. Okay, Sam's version, the dynamics are much better. We're hearing that nice fade to almost nothing, to that niente status. It's really nice, but whenever you see this symbol in a piece, a fermata, it usually means pause, right? It usually means you either hold the note that it's on, or if it's not on a note at all, like if it's over a bar line, then it's like an extended period of just indefinite waiting. And this is a chance for you to show your maturity as a performer to the audience, to the panelists, whoever's watching. And I feel like in this instance, Sam's little appoggiatura lead in into the next section. It's really cool. It sounds very unique, but it's not what's written on the score. I feel like it's a missed opportunity. I'm on the fence about this interpretation. I'm not really sure. So I'll let you guys decide. Let me know down in the comments below. Do you think pause signs should always be adhered to or do you think it's okay to cut them? Let me know. Anyway, despite the pause, I'd say that there's a slight edge to Sam in this section because he really respected that niente. Okay, so in this section, it's notated as triplet quavers and then semi quavers. So we're supposed to hear a difference in rhythmic values between the first two bars and the second two bars. And in Nikhail's version, they're all basically the same rhythm. We're hearing this very slow and spread out, almost quavers and eighth notes throughout the whole thing. It never gets faster than quaver speed, which is very interesting. There's no indication of freedom of time in this section. There's no rubato marking, there's no freely marking, there's no rao, writ, achel, not even a breath mark. So I'm not really sure why Nikhail decided to stretch it out so much. It kind of sounds like he doesn't know the notes. And I know he knows the notes, but to someone listening for the first time, it kind of sounds uncertain almost, a bit shaky. And I feel like it would have been better if he just played it as the rhythm's written. <laughs> also, we can really hear the effect of those harder mallets on the bottom range, especially as he tries to get a forte out of those bigger bars. You're hearing a lot of this, like this really serious surface sound. And we're not hearing so much of that warmth from the bass. We'll see how Sam does. Now, Sam also took the liberty of adding some slowdowns and speed ups to sort of swell the thing. But in this instance, I think his was more in time, if that makes sense. His swelling was still within the context of triplet quavers followed by semi quavers. Also, the dynamics are much clearer, the crescendo and decrescendo. So yeah, I think Sam's version is more correct in this instance. Now, I chose to focus on this run again because it was a bit of contention at the start, and I think in this instance, Nikhail has nailed it. It's very accurate, the voicing is good, and that very quick at the end was very impressive. Very, very good. All right, let's see how Sam did it. Sam did a really good job as well, but he's definitely rushing these two bars. I'm not really sure why, because it's just leading to the ostinato again anyway. It's not the peak of the piece or anything. So 
interesting choice. I'd have to hand it to Nikhil in this instance. Okay, so yes, we can hear some wrong notes in terms of the octaves, but remember this section is hard. Like the octaves, to get them accurate while still maintaining that left hand ostinato is quite difficult. And I have to say, Nikhil is doing an admirable job of holding it all together and he didn't change the tempo. He didn't rush. I know this video was three years ago, but if he had spent more time with the octaves, just slow placement and just getting ready to predict the spacing between the bars, that will probably improve the accuracy a bit, but otherwise it's, yeah, it's pretty good. Wow, okay, so Sam's version is very, very nice. He's got very nice octaves. He did, however, still make mistakes. And I really respect that because that means that one, Vic Firth is showing us a video that has mistakes. They could easily just edit them out or tell him to retake that section again, but they didn't. And two, it just shows that Sam is a human being. <laughs> He's not a robotic beast who gets everything right 100% of the time. Sam is really getting those split octaves beautifully. You can really hear the articulation at the top. Again, something to do with mallet choice. Like I really think the gradation of his mallets is much more favorable than the chaos. And the tempo is not rushing in this section. It's quite steady and quite constant. Feels like it's very under control, which is difficult for this octave section because you have so much to think about. So yeah, I think both players are doing a really good job. Okay, this section is very difficult because it's once again that independent third mallet and everything else staying constant, but also you have a double right. Did it, did it with the fourth mallet, which is very, very difficult at that speed. I have to say he's doing a really good job. Nikhil is really trying to get it to sound and project and he missed a couple of them, but he's still got the majority of them. It's really good. It sounds pretty good. It doesn't sound too harsh and yeah, great job, man. Okay, so Sam in that 3-3-2 section is severely rushing. It's because he's really condensing the 4-3-2-1 lateral run and also kind of skipping to the next beat. So it makes the whole thing just sound really tense and on edge once again, just like the beginning. If he was to take that easy a little bit more, I think this section would sound really, really good because everything else is really nice. Although I did also notice that Sam omitted those double rights. He didn't do any of them. And I don't blame him. Like they're really difficult to do at that speed. Da -da -dum is really, really hard. Overall, this is a mixed bag. In terms of general accuracy and impressiveness, Sam's version is better. But in terms of steadiness, tempo and feel, I say Nikhil's is better. Whoa, this is getting really tough. <laughs> that is a really nice ending from Nikhil. He really just like slid into the DMs of this piece and just ended on that little and it just felt so certain and so sure and it felt like he was really enjoying himself and that last chromatic run very steady very nice voicing I don't even know what that hand gesture was <laughs>
So overall, Sam's ending was also very good, very impressive, very bright and shiny. It's kind of like, this is what I can do. And I really liked this time, the acceleration at the end. I think it was suitable because it was the last time we we're gonna hear anything. There was nothing after it and it's the ending. It's just like full of excitement. It's triple forte. The other times he rushed, it wasn't so appropriate, but this time I think it was good. So in terms of the ending, both players, very, very good, but Sam had the better sound quality because of the mallets. And he also had that sort of intensity that was just a little bit missing from the Kale's version. Whoa, okay, that is one of the hardest comparisons I've ever done on this show. Well, I've only done two, but still. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna tell you my final thoughts in a second, but before I do, let me know down in the comments below, which performance did you prefer? Did you prefer Nikhail's or did you prefer Sam's? If you haven't already, please give me a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. Let's look at the final thoughts. So on first impressions, Sam's recording looks like the better one. It has better sound quality, it has better voicing, it has better mallet choice, and overall the feel feels a little bit more lively, it feels a little bit more impressive. Sam has very strong stage presence as an established performer, and he has a very fluid interpretation of the piece. So he didn't necessarily pay attention to every single detail in the score, but he did what was kind of like his own version of the piece. But I still think making a tango sound really tense and on the edge is not so appropriate. So with that being said, I would give Sam's version a strong nine out of 10. Now, Nikhail's version was a very good example of a very polished performance. And it was absolutely very presentable in the sense that the notes were very accurate. The voicing was very good. He took a lot of care to make sure that the runs were clear. Nikhail's playing never felt tense or on edge because he didn't rush. He kept the tempo very steady throughout. So he must've done a lot of metronome practice all good things. The only things that took away from it were the mallet choice, firstly. If he had better mallets, more suitable mallets for the low end especially, we could get a much nicer sound. Secondly, very interesting interpretation of the beginning and also the middle section with the scalic run. I felt like those slowdowns were verging on unnecessary. But again, personal interpretation, I do understand that. But overall, still a really well polished and well presented performance. So I would give it an eight out of 10. I'd say it's Pretty good, yeah. <laughs> so I wanted to say thank you so much to Sam and to Nikhail for performing so beautifully. They were both really good performances and I would happily pay to see either of them again. Once again, if you haven't already, please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and please leave down in the comments below which performance you preferred and why. I'd love to hear from you. And if you enjoy my videos, make sure you hit that red subscribe button below because I upload every single week on this channel, content like this, as well as all kinds of other stuff. And yes, the new piece is coming this weekend too. So make sure you hit that notification bell to know whenever I upload new content. And of course, if you ever want to feature any content on Let's Watch or on Student vs. Professional, go to adamshandpercussion.com forward slash submit. Thank you so much for watching today's video and I'll see you guys next week for another episode of The Studio. Good night. I know you're